Hi and welcome to another video by Get It Done Home Repairs. Who wants to build a custom pipe table? All right, this one here we just built today in a couple of hours here in my garage. Um, I will show you all the parts that I picked up in the big box store, including the wood. The wood I actually bought a little bit larger because I wanted to cut it down to a size that I needed for it. But if you don't have a saw, you can have the big box store cut this to whatever length you need, just so you know. All right, so enough talking. Let's get the tools out. I'm going to show you what we needed as far as parts to buy in the store and what kind of tools we needed, and we're going to get this job done. All right, so uh, stick around, and uh, let's get this job done. Okay, and here is a picture of, of all of the parts that you're going to need to assemble the, uh, the uh, legs of the, of the custom table you're going to be making. Uh, I will put down in the description below all of the pieces that you're going to need, but I'll just give you an example of what they look like right here now. But like I said, I will put it in the, in the description down below. Now this particular one is a three-quarter inch uh, pipe, black pipe it's called. These are the couplings that put it back together, the T's and the one coupling. These are the, uh, the legs for the support. They're called floor flanges and plus the pipes. But I will put the description down below the video. Here is a, a, a schematic of what it's going to look like when you start assembling everything, where all of the, the T's go, where the coupling goes, and the floor flanges and such as that. And here we're going to assemble the lower part of the leg. We're going to put on the floor flange first. It just screws on as tight as you can. Then we're going to take our T, screw the T onto the lower part of the, uh, the table leg, and that's one. Now we'll put the other three together at the same time. All right, we just lay the, uh, the legs out in the position where they're gonna be. The next thing we're gonna do now is we're gonna take the five inch um, pipe and another T, and we're gonna screw them together and we'll grab the other five inch, three quarter inch pipe and we'll screw that in here again. Next thing we'll do is we'll take the, uh, the front ones and do the exact same thing. We'll put that together in the same fashion. And now we're ready to assemble the, the legs so that they're the correct distance from uh, apart. We take the one leg and just screw it into the one part of the T as far as you can. And now we'll grab the other leg and we'll screw that into the T again. Don't worry if everything is straight. We can straighten this all out later on. Just screw it together until it's fairly snug. And then once you have it on the floor, you can turn it to adjust it as needed. All right, let's assemble the, uh, the other one now so that it's ready to, uh, to put together again. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to take the, uh, the coupling and we're going to put the coupling on one end of the 26 inch pipe. And then we're going to grab the other part of the 26 inch pipe and we're going to screw that in so that we make it one whole piece and that's how wide the table itself is going to be. And now we'll take the legs, screw it into the legs. Again, I said don't worry about if it's off just a little bit. We can adjust all of this later on. Just screw everything in until it's fairly snug right now. And then we'll grab the other set of legs and we'll do the exact same thing. We'll screw them onto that pipe as well. All right, and now once it's tight, we'll just position this so that the four um, floor flanges are touching the floor. And then we can just rotate it until it snugs up a little bit tighter and we can fairly level out the legs somewhat. We'll come back to that later on. And now we'll take the upper part of the leg, the table leg, the 26 inch, and we'll put another flange on top of that. That's the flange that the wood is going to connect onto. And we'll put the flanges on all four of the other upper section 
of the leg itself. And now we take this and we screw it into the T, the upper part of the T, and screw it down until it's snug. It doesn't have to be real tight, just snug, because we're going to come back to this later on. We're going to make our final adjustments once we're ready to put the wood on top of it. Screw it all together. And that's it. This is what it is going to look like after you uh, put everything together. And then we'll come back later on and we'll make our final adjustments just to get everything lined up. But that's what the whole uh, base of the table is going to look like. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to lay the table on a hard surface, both pieces of the table, and we're going to mark approximately where the table legs are going to attach onto our surface. Once we have that approximately where it's going to be, now we can come up underneath here and we can attach the wood that's going to hold the two pieces of the table together into one piece. So now we know where the legs are going to be, so we're going to put this on here so it does not interfere with the legs. We're going to mark the uh, size of it. Again, it's not going to interfere with the legs here as well. The last one over here. All right, so now we know where, where our, our wood is going to go. Okay, now we're going to measure where we're going to uh, lay our support pieces across the top to join the two pieces of wood together. Now we have two by tens here. But 2 by 10s are not 10 inches wide. They're actually about 9 inches wide. So you want to make sure you measure it and then lay it out so you know exactly the, uh, the length of the wood that you're going to put on there. Once we mark it, we'll cut it right here. And on the saw, we'll just cut it through. So now it's the exact length that we need. And we're going to do the exact same thing for the other two supports that we need. Okay, now you can see here I turned the blade at an angle because we want to cut the, the wood at a 45 degree angle so that we don't have a sharp edge sticking down. So we're going to cut it at a 45 degree angle so that way it'll, uh, it'll be a nice clean finished project. And we're going to do that to, to all three of the pieces of wood on both sides of it. So we need to make uh, a couple of cuts. Once we make the cuts, you can see it's a nice clean cut. We'll clean it down later on with a piece of sandpaper, of course. We're going to cut the other ones now. And once they're cut, it's ready to start to, uh, to assemble the table top. All right, so now we have our legs of the table sitting on top of it in the approximate location where they're going to go. Like I said, they're not exact. They're just approximate. We're going to measure the, the width of the wood. Like I said, this is a custom table, so you can make it any width that you wanted to make it. I'm going to find the center point, and we're going to mark the center point on the wood. Okay, once we have the center point, we're going to lay out our support that's going to hold the two tops of the table together. Put it in a location, and then we'll grab our drill, and we're going to pre-drill the pilot holes for the screws. You want to pre-drill them because this way here, the screw will go in exactly where you need it to and it won't be moving all over the place while you're trying to screw it in. Make sure that the depth of the screw is not going to come through the other side of the wood, so make sure you have the right length screw before you drill anything. You're not going to drill all the way through the wood. You're only going to partially drill it and the screw is going to pull it in the rest of the way so it doesn't penetrate the other side and can through on the top of the table. Again, make sure you set the depth of the drill so you don't accidentally drill through 
the other side and damage the top surface where um, you're going to refinish later on. Again, we're going to pre-drill the holes so we know that it's going exactly where we want the screws to go and pull the wood as tight as we possibly can together. We'll drive the screws all the way in until they're slightly recessed inside the, inside the wood so it's not sticking down. And now we're going to go to the end and we're going to do the exact same thing on the end. We're going to measure where it's going to go so it's nice and straight. And then we're going to grab our drill and we're going to pre-drill the holes again before we put the screws in there. Just make sure it doesn't interfere with the legs of the table that you're going to be putting up. Make sure you're evenly spaced so that it doesn't interfere with the legs at all. Same thing on the other side. And I always try to make everything as even as we can on one side as well as on the other so everything is in the same exact position. Four inches and then the wood. Four inches to the wood. And we did the same thing on the other side. And now we're going to pre-drill the holes and we'll put the screws in and that'll join our tabletop together. Again, make sure you're, you're drilling at the proper depth. You don't want to accidentally drill through where it's coming through on the other side and it's going to damage your, your work surface. Pre-drill all the holes and then drive the screws in until they're slightly recessed. We're going to go to the other side now and we're going to do the exact same thing on the other side. Now we're going to lay out exactly where we want to put our legs. Make sure that they're even on the on the part of the table you want to have. In this particular case, I believe it was a, an inch on one side and an inch on the other side. So we're just going to lay it out. We're going to mark where we are going to put the, um, the floor flanges attached to the table itself. And now we're going to come in here with a drill. And again, we're going to pre-drill all the holes before we try to drive the screw in. Again, it's much easier to drive a screw into a pre-drilled hole than to try to get the screw to bite in the correct location. So make sure you pre-drill them. And after it's pre-drilled, then we're going to grab the screws. And we're making sure that the screws are shorter than the other screws that we use so that they won't come through the project and stick through the top. Make sure you have the correct length. And now we'll drive them all down. And we're going to do the same thing on all four of the legs. We'll screw them all nice and tight. We'll do the exact same thing on the other side now. And we flip the table over and you can see that this is what the top of the table looks like. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to lay out what kind of sandpaper we're going to use. Now sandpaper has different grits. The lower the number, the coarser the grit of the paper. So you want to start out with a sandpaper that's a higher number and we're going to work down towards a lower number. The higher number takes off all of the real big imperfections and we're going to do the entire project with the heavy uh, grit paper first. That'll clean up all of the really um, bigger imperfections in the wood. Alright, so now that we're ready with our project to be stained, you want to make sure all of the dust is off of the work area. Make sure you clean all the dust off. If there's a little bit on there, it's not going to make a big deal, but try to get the majority of it out. We pick the stain we're going to use, which is personal preference, and we need a brush, we need a couple of rags, and we need a very small brush to get inside here so we make sure we have all of the areas colored the way we want them. Now you can use a paintbrush to paint it on, but remember that a lot of times a stain has to be cleaned up with paint thinner, so in this case I'm using a brush that I'm just going to be throwing away. Alright, so what we're going to do first, we're going to apply the stain 
you want to put the stain on the way the direction of the grain of the wood and you can see the grain of the wood goes this way so that's the way you want to put the stain on the direction of the grain of the wood and you put it on fairly heavy so it, it, it puddles on there and it doesn't just soak right in because we're going to wait about 15 minutes maybe a half an hour and then we're going to remove the excess stain that's on here all right so we're going to continue doing this throughout the whole the whole length of the table itself and once this is done we're going to wait 15 minutes and then we'll come back and I'll show you what the next step would be in order to uh, to get the color the to achieve the color that you want on the uh, on the table itself all right so let me finish doing this and I'll bring you back as soon as we get it finished up the thing I want to mention to you while we're doing this also is you want to make sure you put something down on the ground so you don't make a mess if it happens to have a couple of drops of the, uh, the stain to go onto your floor. So in this case I have cardboard down there that we will just throw away once we're finished. Now after the uh, the stain has dried sufficiently you come in with a clean cloth and we're going to wipe off the excess in the direction of the grain, okay? Okay, we're going to make sure we wipe the ends off as well, right here. Now we did already stain the bottom of this just so you know, but that's personal preference. If you want to stain it, you can. You don't necessarily have to. Okay, so now after we have it wiped down to the finish that we'd like, we're going to let it dry. The container says dries four hours before coating it with a clear. So we're going to let this dry a little bit, and then we'll come back. We're going to put our clear on this, and we're going to wrap this job up. Now after our, our surface has dried thoroughly, it says four hours to dry. I did have it drying for a little longer than four hours. This is actually fairly cold in here. So I do have a heater over here to just heat this up so it dried a little bit quicker. All right, next thing we're going to do now is we're going to put our finish on top of it. You could pick whatever kind of a finish you want. You could put a matte finish, you could put a shiny, you could put a semi-gloss, whatever kind of a, of, a, of a finish you want to put on it. It's up to your personal preference. In this particular case, I'm using a matte finish, and we're going to apply it in the direction of the grain again as we did before. All right, so we're going to put the light coat on here, and we're just going to put it over the entire surface. All right, nice and easy, and just follow the grain. So once our, uh, our project is dry and uh, the, the varathane that's on there or whatever you put on there as a clear is nice and dry, we're going to come in here with a 220 grit sandpaper and we're going to sand the top of the, um, the wood very lightly just to take off any kind of bumps or, or burrs or any kind of little imperfections in the clear coat. All right, and after we do that, we're going to come in here with a rag. We're going to wipe off all of the dust from the little bit of sanding that we're doing. We're going to clear coat it one more time, and this job is done and on to the next. All right, as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.